US100 is the perfect ultrasonic distance sensor for all ESP8266 modules, mainly for two reasons. It runs on 3.3 volts and it can feed you measurements readings via UART or serial communication. Additionally, it also measures temperature. In this video, I'll first show you how to use the US100 via the ordinary trigger and sensor method. And in the last part, I'll show you how to use the serial communication so that the sensor sends you distance and temperature automatically. According to me, this is definitely the best method. If you're new to this channel, my name is Mike and I upload videos with my brother Chris. We enjoy making stuff with Arduinos, ESP32s, ESP8266 and Raspberry Pis. So if you like this video, do remember to subscribe. If you have a look at the US100 sensor, it looks very much like the HCSR04. As we can see from the front side, it has one additional ground pin. And also the speaker and microphone are closer together. When it turn the sensors over, we can see a few more differences. First, the US100 has a jumper on the back side. This jumper controls whether it's in UART mode and delivers distance measurement and temperature over serial communication, or if you have to trigger the transmitter and receiver and do the counting or timing ourselves. I'll refer to this mode as manual mode in the rest of the video. If you're interested in a comparison of the HCSR04, the HCSR05, and the US100, I'll leave a link to that video in the card on the top. So, if you leave the jumper in place, the US100 is in UART mode, and if we remove it, it's in manual mode. There's one additional difference between the US100 and the SCSR04. It's a diode on the side of the US100. I have not had much luck looking up the IC online, so I'm really not sure about this, but it could be that they're using the diode as a temperature sensor. What do you guys think? Leave a comment with your thoughts. Let's first connect and test the US100 in manual mode. This is pretty much how you would use the HCSR04, but since the US100 runs on 3.3 volts, there's no need to supply a separate 5 volt power source. You can connect it directly to 3.3 volts. But remember, the US100 can also run on 5 volts if you want. If you're connecting it to a node MCU, VMOS or similar, you probably have a 5 pin available and can use that. But if you're using the ESP01, ESP07 or ESP12 on a PCB, you might not have 5 volts available. So then the US100 will fit your project perfectly. Let's wire it up. I'm connecting it to a VMOS D1 Mini similar board. Remove the jumper on the back side of the US100. Connect 3.3 volt to VCC, ground to ground, D1 to echo, D2 to trigger. This is the code we're going to upload. You can find a link to the code in the description of the video. In manual mode, we have to do everything ourselves. First, we have to trigger the transmitter to send a signal. Then we have to wait for the signal to hit the object and travel back again. When the signal returns, we have to read the length of the pulse. The pulse is lasting just as long as it took for the signal to travel to and back from the object. Then we have to multiply this time with the speed of sound and divide it by 2, since we only want the distance to the object and not the round trip to the object and back to the sensor again. Upload the code and open the serial monitor. And voila, there we have our distant measurements. Not too much code, and it gives us a fairly reliable distance. But did you know that the US100 can give you an even better and more accurate measurement? In UART mode, you don't have to do the triggering and reading, 
as you do in manual mode. The US-100 delivers the result to your device even more accurately. How can it measure more accurately, you might ask? Well, speed of sound changes with temperature, and the US-100 adjusts the distance by factoring in the temperature. Depending on your use case, this can change quite a lot. Let's say you're building a garage door opener with a distance sensor to check if the door is open or not. And a lot of places, it can be minus 20 degrees Celsius in wintertime and plus 4 degrees Celsius in summertime. That's a difference of about 60 degrees. At minus 20 degrees, the speed of sound is about 319 meters per second. And at 40 degrees, it's about 355 meters a second. That's a difference of over 11%. So how do we use the US-100 in York mode? If you leave the jumper in place, the US-100 is in York mode. The connection stays the same. 3.3 volts goes to VCC, ground goes to ground, D1 goes to the RX pin, D2 goes to the TX pin. The link to this code is also in the description. By sending the byte 0 x 55 we ask the US100 for the distance. We have to read the first byte and multiply it with 256 and then add the second byte. If you only want to read the temperature, we send the byte 0 x 50 and we read the data back and adjust it with 45 to get the temperature in Celsius. Upload the code and open the serial monitor. That's how you get data from the US-100 in York mode. Since it is a bit hard to come by a proper data sheet on the US-100, I did a speedy test to verify that the US-100 factor in temperature in its data. So I recorded distance and temperature in Excel and placed the soldering iron under it. I did not move the US-100. Still, as you can see from the chart, we can confirm that temperature changes the distance measurements. The test was kind of quick and dirty, so I don't expect a perfect linear graph, but the graph is fairly good. I can also confirm that the area around the diode is very sensitive to heat. I can still not confirm that the temperature is measured with the diode, but my suspicion has now gotten stronger. And I have to give a warning. Do not try the following at home. As a maker, I like to test ideas. So I just had to try to bypass the diode to see if it would influence the temperature readings. Well, it kind of did, since all the reading stops altogether from the US-100. So by tampering with the diode, we're obviously shorting something that should not be shorted. Luckily, the sensor started up again, although I've tried four times. And now I have to label the sensor as potentially damaged, as I might have given it a permanent headache, causing it to become unreliable in the future, maybe. So as I said, do not try that at home. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Hope to see you next time.